What does it mean to be embodied and self-aware, to feel yourself to be more than flesh, and yet to know that the only certainty there is is that we are a collection of bones, muscles, nerves, organs. The only thing we can ever really know is a finiteness of flesh. I look to the body for answers as countless artists have done before me because I ask, what does it mean? The human body is the measure and the sum. I was born in Cuba to a mixed family. My father was a scientist, a doctor. He had a public clinic and a private one at home. I remember patients waiting to see El Doctor. As a child, some of my fondest memories are of poring over the illustrations in his medical books. My mom was born in Spain and was raised by nuns. She bore an intense spirituality. In Havana, her spiritual yearnings found solace in Santeria, a syncretic mix of Yoruba animism and Spanish Catholicism. So it is that I grew up in a household where the human body and various guises of dejection and exaltation were primary themes in devotional and medical imagery. I'm a visual artist, a paint slinger if you will. I look to the stylized suffering of northern painting, to the compassionate regard for the afflicted, to the violent distortions of high modernism, and to postmodern concerns with the abject body. In 1996, a childhood friend died of AIDS and my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer. The figure series is the result of aesthetic wrestling and wrestling that I had with memories and losses. The series can be assembled into two related groups, images portraying an incursive disease and images portraying an intrusive operation. In some, anonymous bodies are breached by disease. In others, anonymous hands breach the body. By 1998, this approach changed. I was interested in the transparency of the body, its vulnerability to the gaze and to representation itself. You can see how the panels can be arranged in various configurations relating to each other and to the exhibition space in order to create new associations. The drawings of x-rays still reveal the invasive effects of both disease and technology on the human body, but they also present a real picture of the physical body while penetrating it on a flat picture plane. In this manner, I was able to balance the dichotomy between actual and conceptual representation, bridging the gap between passive representation and active model. I wanted the viewer to realize they weren't looking at real x-rays, to notice the physical act of drawing. I left the dust of the graphite, the bristle marks of the brush, the cracks in the sizing and the silver leaf, the folds in the paper, and even the staple holes, so that these would become an important aspect of the work. It's important to remember that the material is my métier. At the end of the day, it is the light reflecting from a painted or drawn surface and not the immaterial lamp of ideas that brings me revelation, and I hope to evoke the same in my audience. I wanted the material artifact of the act of drawing to let the viewer question the illusionism of the X-ray imagery, to question the act of looking at itself. What happens to the mystery of life the mystery of the body when technology renders it permeable. While still working on the x-ray drawings, I began to explore the images in oil on canvas. I wanted to promote an expressive painterly surface. The medium of oil paint and its formalized application transformed the radiographic images. Muscular shapes suggesting the human heart pushed against bright fields of variegated color. Elegant rib cages formed arabesques that enclosed delicate traceries of veins and breathing lungs. Depicted in sensual and rich color, 
the organs, bones, and viscera were rendered in a painterly space that alluded to a transcendent reality. The represented body, vulnerable and invaded, began to hold symbolic references to things outside itself. By the year 2000, the inside and the outside of the body became a single reality within the surface of the work, and I began Metacorpus. These were monumental drawings, 50, 30, 20 foot long scroll-like drawings unfolding across gallery walls, unearthing the connection between the mythical and the physical by exploring both the inside and the outside of the body. In the spirit of Carl Jung's belief that the human body contained the memory of all creation, these figurative works melded the microcosm with the macrocosm to discover the intersection between the mundane and the spiritual. Evidence of the physical fact of the material mythos was manifested in the synthesis of the profane and the sublime with connections drawn between such different particulars as x-rays, genome typing, blood corpuscles, the pulse of a double heartbeat, the precision of the Fibonacci curve, the abstraction of a silver thumbprint, or a leap eternally frozen in representational art. With full immersion, I explored the notions of our body's tides and also their correlation to the larger tides ruled by the moon. The dance of ecstasy used as its central imagery the five senses and a systematic meaning the dance of Shiva as he creates and destroys the world through his dance. Some of this work was censored and for me, it marked a terrible time. I felt its effect in my art practice, and I looked to my own body, and later, to other women's bodies for renewed meaning in what I call the Hecate series. Clinical depictions of the body's every pimple and wrinkle was worked on translucent vellum and mylar surfaces that mimicked the milky translucency of skin. I let go of a classicizing balance for a sense of ambiguity and tension that can best be described as a kind of detached expressionism. An uneasy objectivity is articulated by contrasting sensuous rendering with expressive distortions of line. They can be displayed as discrete pieces or layered so that the underlying drawings can be deciphered through the ones above. Layering produces a kind of disconnection syndrome as the eyes try to find a dialogue between the bodies and finds none. The skeleton once again features in my figurative work, but now it is not an artifact of medical technology. The skeleton now appears less as a biological fact than a psychological evidence, as evidence and revelation of the shadow or as a proclamation of the eternal struggle between Eros and Thanatos. And now, as always, I search for meaning there in the gesture, in the body turning and twisting into the suffering, but also into the sublimation. As countless artists before me have done, I do. I look to the body for answers, and it is where I find the measure and the sum. <laughs>